focus standard for today's lesson comes from grade 8 functions standard A define evaluate and compare functions our topic for the lesson today comes from our mathematical models unit on types of relationships our essential question is what are the two main types of mathematical relationships so please take a moment pausing the video if you need to to set up your header Make sure to include the today's date, so have your question column and your note column, and resume the video when you're ready to begin. So in our study of mathematics this year, we're going to be looking at all sorts of mathematical relationships uh, between two different variables, and there are three different views when looking at mathematical relationships, and that is a graph, a table, or an equation. And each one of these views gives us a slightly different perspective and is useful for different reasons. So let's start with the graph. It's a visual representation and it is a good one to use for estimating predictions. The next one, the table, is nice. Uh, just to organize the data, so when you have the raw numbers, the table is a nice way to organize it. And then the equation, writing an equation, allows us to calculate exact output values for any input. So it makes, allows us to not just make a prediction, we can be precise and say, well, if the value is this, then the output's going to be that. So we're going to be looking and using all three views throughout the year for the different mathematical models that we're exploring. So we want to talk about the two main types of relationships and we're going to look at those two main types in their graph, table, and equation forms. So the two main types of relationships in math are that we have either linear relationships or we have nonlinear relationships. And so in each of these different views, the graph, the table, and the equation, we want to be able to look at it and say, oh, I can tell that it is this type of relationship, and it's going to be either linear or nonlinear. So let's take a look first at graphs. In graphs, a linear relationship is seen, we know it's linear if it's just one straight line through the graph doesn't matter what direction that line is going as long as it is a straight line through the graph it'll be linear if however we're looking at a relationship and we see that it bent on a graph and we see that it bends or curves or has any kind of break in the graph then we'll know that it's nonlinear it's not straight so here are some visual examples like I said, it doesn't matter what direction it's going as long as it's a straight line through the graph. So all four of these are examples of linear relationships. However, here's a handful of examples of nonlinear relationships. We can see that they have bends, they break and go the opposite direction. They may just be through part of it, but again we see a curve here. So that, anything like this, is going to be a nonlinear example. So we want to be able to start to identify just by looking at a graph of a relationship, whether it's linear, meaning it's a straight line, or whether it has any kind of curve or break to it. Next is looking at tables. And with tables, we're looking for how does the data behave? And again, this is ideal if our at least our x values are all listed in order with their corresponding y values and so the y value will change by the same amount for each x value if it is linear. If it's nonlinear, the y values will change by a different amount, amount each time the x value changes. So let's again take a look at some actual examples. So here I have one table. Notice that my x values are all in order and they're with their corresponding y values. And so the x values are changing by 2 and the y value is decreasing by 10. In this example, x is increasing by 1 each time 
but our y value is increasing by 3 each time. Again, for every change in x, constant change in x, the y is changing by the same amount. It's predictable. Now let's look at some nonlinear examples. So here, we see a similar x values. We're, going, we're counting by 2's. It starts from 2 to 8, goes up by 2's. But now look at our y values. It's going, it starts from 4 to 16. There's an increase of 12. But then it jumps to 64. Then it jumps to 256. That's totally different amounts each time. So this would be, just looking at this table, we can say, well, the x is changing by 2 each time, but every time the y value is increasing by a whole lot more, and it's not consistent. On this example of another nonlinear table, our x's are increasing by 1. And then our y value goes from 2 to 4, so an increase of 2. Then from 4 to 9, so an increase of 5. And then from 9 to 16, so an increase of 7. Again, that's not changing by the same amount, although our x is. So these, when we see the y changing by a different amount, we know from just looking at the table that that's going to be a nonlinear relationship. Let's take a look at our final view, looking at equations. So in equation, equations, we want to look at their most simplified form. And it, if it's linear, there will not be any exponents in its most simplified form. Whereas for nonlinear, there will be exponents. And so let's take a look at just a few examples. This is going to be the most popular one that we use all year long. You're, you probably have already been introduced to it in seventh grade. y equals mx plus b. Here's another one. ax plus by plus c equals 0. And in our final one, y equals kx. So these are just three equations. And so in each of these, you can see in this, there's no exponents on any of these variables. And so by not having any exponents, then we know that it is a linear relationship. On the other hand, in these equations, we get ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, so it's similar. But notice that now we're seeing those exponents of 2. So this right away is just a red flag. Oh, that's a nonlinear relationship. We might also see a variable being treated as an exponent. If the variable itself is being treated as an exponent, then that also we would say, oh, that's going to be a nonlinear relationship just by looking at the equation. And here's just an even more simplified y equals x to the negative first. Also, we see a negative x, we see an exponent here, so we know that that's going to be nonlinear. So that concludes our video on looking at three different views and of our two different types of relationships, linear and nonlinear relationships. So make sure that your notes are complete. Go ahead and feel free to start the summary and come ready to discuss and use this more in class.